Hey guys, it's Prof again. This time I'm actually going over a topic I did over three years ago now, and that's ranking the Phantom Troop. Outside of the ranking itself being pretty bad, it was my very first video, and the quality definitely shows. Or lack thereof. I wanted to give an updated and higher quality look at the topic, especially given just how bad the video itself is. It just seemed like fun to tackle the topic all over again. So here we are. First thing I need to go over, and that's how the Hunter x Hunter community tackles power scaling as a whole. Many believe it's outright impossible to rank the Phantom Troop because of Morel's opinion that aura levels don't matter in a fight. This is somewhat true, of course abilities and intelligence matter in a fight a lot, but to say that aura levels and power don't matter at all is just not true. What could Morel possibly do to defeat Meruem? Why didn't Kite defeat Pito when Pito didn't even have an ability yet? What about Gon defeating the Heavens Arena fighters? People with much more experience and fully developed Nen abilities. Even more recently in the latest chapters of the manga, we see that Hisoka is so powerful that some abilities don't even affect him. There's many examples of aura and strength being the determining factor in a fight, especially when this is a power scaling ranking, not a random encounter where the characters can prep or something. Ranking them with 100% certainty is still hard, so I'll be dividing the characters into tiers just like I did with the S-Class ranking video, which you guys should go check out by the way. Characters in the same tier can be somewhat switched around, with characters a tier above pretty definitively being more powerful or a better fighter. That doesn't mean it's impossible for a lower ranked character to beat a higher ranked character, just less likely. With that in mind, let's get started. Class D is, unsurprisingly, Cortopi at 15 and Pakunoda at 14. Cortopi is the bottom due to having basically no feats period. He doesn't have a single fight in the entire manga and is rated last on the strength ranking. He does have a large reserve of aura as shown when he easily created 50 large buildings, but we don't know how that translates to combat. Just because he has enough aura to make all those buildings doesn't mean he can infuse all that aura into his punches or body. Pakunoda also has few feats, but she was at least able to overpower Gon and Killua in the York New Arc. While Gon and Killua were still novices with Nen at this point, they were strong enough to defeat the Nen users at Heaven's Arena, a relatively impressive feat when you consider the prestige that comes with the 200th floor. That combined with the fact she has more physical strength, puts Pakunoda above Cortopi. Next at Class C we have Kaluto, Shizuku, Shalnark, Machi, and Franklin. Non order. Machi fans, please bear with me and at least listen to what I have to say. Kalito, Shizuku, and Shalnark are all pretty easy to go over because they each face Chimera Ant officers infused with Nen. While Chimera Ants aren't all the same strength level, on average they were able to give Gon and Killua a hard time after Greed Island. Here they went from so weak they couldn't even play the game, to fighting the strongest players in that game. Despite that, Ramot, a Chimera Ant officer, gets hit by a fully charged John Ken, while being completely paralyzed by Killua's lightning, and having no Nen on top of that, and he still takes the attack. Other officer ants like Centipede and Baro also forced Gon to get pretty serious. The ants then learn how to use Nen, an amp compared to the difference of a child to an adult. Kalito rips Small Beetle into pieces, Shalnark one-shots Pell and Boku with autopilot, and Shizuku literally beats holes into Pike's body. Far more impressive than Pakunoda whose only feat is beating up a much weaker Gon and Killua. But even then, they were still strong enough to break some of her bones. You basically have a scale that goes Pakunoda, Gon and Killua at the bottom, then Gon and Killua after training in Greed Island, then Chimera Ant Officers, then Chimera Ant Officers with Nen, and then these three above that. You could say that these three ants are just astronomically weaker than Ramont for some reason, but that would be strange since on average they all seem to be around the same level, that being strong enough to give Gon a hard time without Nen. Some people think that Kalito should be weaker than Pakunoda or even Cortopi due to Kalito saying the other troop members are so far above him. However, neither Cortopi or Pakunoda were even there at the time, so Kalito would have no way of knowing how strong they are. You have to remember that Kalito believed it would be easy to rise in the ranks of the troop until after she saw Phaeton in action. This means that Kalito is only confirmed to be weaker than the troop members that were actually there. 
and his feats are much better than Pakunoda's. Machi and Franklin are weird because they have almost no feats at all. Machi takes down both Gon and Killua in York New, but like I already explained, this is a level below even Rama or random greed island players like Tezgura who literally called them fodder. Franklin's only combat showing is sparring with Nobunaga, but Nobunaga doesn't even draw his sword and in the manga only fights hand to hand. Machi also gets compared to Nobunaga and even Hisoka by Killua, but there is heavy context to this statement. For one, Killua never directly says Nobunaga and Machi are Hisoka level, he just tells Gon to imagine they are like two Hisokas to illustrate how much stronger they are. Killua's ability to gauge opponent's strength is also called into question, as he says the stronger someone is, the easier it is to hide that strength. The last time Gon and Killua saw Hisoka fight was when he was heavily suppressed, and he's not really trying. Therefore, it's not concrete to say Machi or Nobunaka would be Hisoka level, or even concrete to say she's on Nobunaga's level to begin with. Nobunaga is one of the troop's combat specialists, alongside Finks and Phaeton, and is directly stated to protect Shizuku and Shalnar. The only other feat for Franklin is in the 2011 anime where he is shown quote unquote protecting Shizuku during the Mafia assault. This is a pretty big stretch in my opinion, as not only was Shizuku not in any danger or concern, but this is absent from the manga. As you guys can see, saying Machi and Franklin are for sure stronger than Shizuku is janky. Saying she's a support type doesn't really mean much because she's clearly stronger than people with combat abilities like Kaluto. Even Kaluto has a much better feat than Machi, who Killua could even sort of damage. Once again, Machi was not there when Kaluto said the troop was above him, so you can't even concretely scale Machi over Kaluto based on feats. You can see why we need tiers, and why this can get really confusing. The main problem comes from certain characters, very popular and beloved characters, <coughs> having almost no real accolades to their name. They just look cool and seem strong. If you do believe Machi and Franklin scale to Nobunaga, then the ranking would be Kaluto at 13, Shizuku and Shalnark at 12, 11, then Machi and Franklin at 10 and 9. Between Shizuku and Shalnark is hard to say since autopilot Shalnark did one-shot his opponent, however the ants he fought are questionable since Pell is just a peon chimera ant and Boku was a non-combat type with a manipulator ability. Shalnark also isn't a typical combatant as a manipulator who controls people. Hard to say which one is above the other, but they should be above Kaluto who admitted to being below them. Franklin and Machi are also borderline indistinguishable, although Franklin has more raw strength and his bullets likely give him an edge over Machi who has no ranged attacks. If you don't buy Machi and Franklin scaling to Nobunaga, then the ranking would almost completely flip, with Franklin and Machi being 13 and 12, Kaluto being 11, and Shalnark and Shizuku being 10 and 9. I'll say that in terms of concrete scaling, it's very hard to say that Machi and Franklin rank highly. They simply don't have enough feats, especially compared to facing Chimera and officers. Believe me, I've scoured the entire manga, translated all the databook pages, rewatched the whole anime because I know the Machi fans will burn me at the stake for placing her below the top 10 at least. But in my gut, I do think Machi and Franklin are supposed to be stronger, but still only cap at the top of this tier for now. I'll let you guys decide in the comments. Next up in class B, Nobunaga, Finks, and Banolanov. Nobunaga of course follows class C as he is stated by Krolo to protect Shizuku and Shalnark. Protecting someone doesn't automatically mean you are stronger than they are, after all, Merom's guards are weaker than he is, but in this context, Nobunaga is a combat type who protects members with more valuable support powers. Therefore, he should be capable of replicating what they did to Chimera Ants they fought, only much better. His only other scaling is completely terrifying York New Art Killua to the point he couldn't even run away. Like I said, York New Killua isn't that impressive, but what is impressive is the fact that Killua never reacted this intensely to Finks when placed in a similar situation, nor did it kick in when facing Machi. This means that Nobunaga is probably stronger than at least base Finks. Nobunaga is also an Aido master with the hunter guide stating outright he is the best fighter in the troop in terms of combat skill, like swordsmanship and martial arts. Even if you think Franklin and Machi are near his level, they should definitely be weaker, not even drawing his sword to fight Franklin and being much more skilled than they are. Finks and Manolanov both fight Chimera and officers and once they use their heavy hitting attacks, Ripper Cyclotron and Battle Contabile Jupiter, they one-shot their opponents. 
This is more impressive than Class C who spends a lot longer or struggles more with their opponents. Autopilot Shalnark could be here as well, considering his aura level completely baffled Boku, but it's not very likely since he should be weaker than Nobunaga. Finx can't actually do any damage to the gorilla ant he fought with his net enhanced punches and Benolanov can't scratch the ant with his prologue attack, but they are both confident they could take down Transform Zazan, probably meaning with their strongest attacks, they can damage Squadron Leader tier ants. Of the three, I think Nobunaga would be last at 8. Nobunaga's only concrete scaling is being much stronger than Shizuku, who struggled a lot with her opponent, as opposed to getting one shot. It's definitely possible he could one shot Officer Ants, we just don't know. Killua also might have been able to sense Fink's true power with his net ability, and still thought Nobunaga was scarier, but it seems he actually has to see the ability to know how dangerous it is. Between Fink's and Banolanov, Banolanov's Jupiter only manages to crush the ant he fought, whereas Finx completely turns his to paste. While they probably aren't exactly equally strong or anything, it's still all we really have to go off of. Finx's ability Ripper Cyclodron charges each time he winds his punch, meaning he could theoretically charge up his attacks even more, whereas Jupiter is the strongest thing we've seen from Banolanov so far. Therefore, Banolanov is 7 and Finx is 6. Class A is Phaeton, Uvogan, and Illumi. Once again, not in order. Phaeton just has a much better feat compared to Class B, and that's fighting Zazan. After seeing Zazan, the other true members believe she must be the queen based on her strength, and Zazan also believes she's stronger than her soldiers. The fact Phaeton can hold his own and even overwhelm her when he's not even at top speed means he'd dominate all her soldiers without even using his net ability. He's even able to damage Zazan with his projectile sword, when Bonolenov and Finks couldn't even scratch her soldiers without their abilities, meaning Phaeton's straight up combat abilities should be superior to Class B entirely. Of course he gets dominated by Transform Zazan to the point even Ko does literally no damage, but Finks and Bonolenov are confident they can still fight Transform Zazan. You'd think that puts them on a similar level to Phaeton, but of course Phaeton has his own ability, Pain Packer which translates the damage he takes into different powers. When transformed into a rising sun, all the troop members run away out of fear and it fries Zazan. He even says this ability was on the weaker side, meaning not only can this ability get even stronger, but it implies he has fought people much stronger than Zazan, which push his ability even further. Regardless, basically one-shotting transform Zazan is an unparalleled feat by any character thus far. While you can say Finks and Bonolanov were confident, we don't know the exact circumstances of how they would defeat her. All we know is they think they would win, which could also be overconfidence. Compare that to Phaeton cackling like Light Yagami over Zazan's corpse, and it's pretty clear it's a lot better feat. Overall, defeating Zazan is just way better than anything Class B has pulled off, so Phaeton definitely deserves to be in the top 5. Many would rank Uvogan closer to Finks and Nobunaga, but consistently, his statements and feats are way above them. People downplay Uvogan due to his loss against Karapika, but throughout the fight, Uvogan was superior to Karapika in raw power. Uvogan goes as far as to say that nobody, period, can withstand his full power Big Bang impact, which shatters Karapika's arm who has mastered net enhancement. As a founding member, he has probably seen every troop member in combat and doesn't think any of their Nen defenses are enough to block his Big Bang impact. This is insane because that would include Krollo who has fought Silva Zoldic more than once and fought Silva and Zeno at the same time, blocking their Nen blasts and punches. Silva one-shot Chitu, a squadron leader Chimera Ant who trained with Poof and Pitu, meaning his use of Nen is probably even better than Zazan. Frollo has fought this guy twice and still thinks Uvogan can beat pretty much anyone in a brawl, and Uvogan agrees. Thinks can't even scratch Officer Ants with his normal punches and needs to resort to his Nen ability, while Uvogan is pretty much one-shotting Ants on an even higher caliber. Backing up Uvogan being stronger than Finks is actually Gon. Gon later in the Chimera Ant arc, after training with Knuckle and Bisky, is able to take down Chimera Ant officers without even trying. And these Ants have Nen. Even when two Ants are comboing him with teamwork attacks, Gon takes almost no damage. His John Ken, which is basically him focusing 
focusing all his aura into his fist plus a small charge time was even enough to scare Knuckle, someone who could take a beat down from Chi-2 with almost no real damage. You then have the recent Togashi Expo where we learn more about Nen and Nen affinities, and it's confirmed Uvogan is a far superior enhancer to Gon. Gon's feats in the Chimera Ant arc are honestly just much better than what Finks has shown us so far, and Uvogan is much stronger than Gon. This combined with the manga volume statement confirming Uvogan is one of the strongest Phantom True members, all but confirms he belongs in Class A. Illumi is really weird, this is a guy Hisoka considers a good opponent but simultaneously gets his arm broken by beginning of series, no Nen gone. Consistently, however, he is considered a very high tier fighter. During the election arc, Hisoka is sizing up the other hunters and rates the Zodiacs between 8.5 and 9, but rates Illumi even higher at a 9.5. Usually you could say Hisoka has no idea what he's talking about, but Hisoka is actually extremely insightful in gauging people's power or potential. He knew Netero was the strongest at the hunter exams, as well as correctly surmising that Gon had the most potential of everyone else, just like Netero did, and their analysis was correct. He also correctly knew that Krolo was the strongest troop member, which we'll get to soon, despite some members having more aura or physical strength. It seems to be some kind of sixth sense that some characters have, like Pito and Netero. The Zodiacs are the top hunters, with Kanzai straight up saying they are stronger than Morel and Nav. Morel can of course fight and defeat squadron leader Chimera Ants like Leol and Chitu. The Zodiacs are also Netero sparring partners, who even while extremely rusty can easily solo entire squads of Chimera Ants without even trying. Killua even tried using Illumi and Hisoka to scare Morel, Nav, and Netero, from fighting P2 when he believed he had a good gauge on their strength, and he mentions Illumi instead of Nobunaga, who he's faced before. Hisoka also considers Illumi a worthy opponent, someone he actively seeks out a fight with and highly values his abilities. Hisoka, as we'll see shortly after, can fight Krolo, who scales to Zeno and Silva Zoldic. All that taken into account, it seems consistent that Illumi should scale above squadron leader level. Would be pretty weird if he scaled below something that Silva could one-shot. The only problem with Illumi is I don't know what specifically makes him so strong. He has no actual fights, so we don't know what skills or powers make him strong. Does he have a lot of aura? Is he just super skilled or fast and just one-shots people with his needles? We don't know. All we know is overall, he should be above squadron leader tier, which is better than class B who are squadron leader tier at best. Putting an order to Class A is especially hard since their abilities are so varied. Illumi's manipulator needles could neutralize Uvogan's strength advantage or beat Phaeton without hurting him. Phaeton might take a few hits then bust out Pain Packer on Uvogan, or maybe Uvogan is too physically powerful for them to handle. If I had to pick, I'd say Phaeton would be 5, Uvogan 4, and Illumi 3. Phaeton, while definitely above, had much more trouble against Zazan, an opponent Uvogan may be physically stronger than. While Rising Sun could definitely take him down, it's debatable if Phaeton could even survive a single full power punch from Uvogan. Illumi is extra hard to rank, but the fact that Hisoka holds him in such high regard, but didn't seem to feel anything for Uvogan, makes me feel his overall combat ability is above everyone else so far. But like I said, Class A is debatable and I'd love to see how you would rank these three in the comments below. Lastly, Hisoka and Krolo in Class S. Big surprise. While most people definitely agree Krolo stands at the top, there's many contentions with Hisoka, which of course I'll have to go over. Krolo is basically confirmed in the Hunter Guide to be the strongest in the troop, with it being stated he only joins the battlefield when there is a major crisis, like the troop being in danger. This is backed up by a later statement in the same guide that Krolo's combat skills are the best in the troop and some of the best in the entire world. In terms of feats, he blatantly scales to Zeno and Silva Zoldic. When Zeno saw his aura, he went so far as to say he might have to die just to take Krolo down, despite the fact they were fighting him two on one. The Hunter Guide also confirms this, saying his combat abilities without prep are on par with Zeno and Silva Zoldic. 
Silva being the same guy who can one-shot squadron leader Chitu, and Zeno was so strong that Netero trusted him to help divide the royal guard away from Meruem, and after sensing his strength, even Nefer P2 got excited to fight him. Quello can block their punches, blasts, and damage them, even when he's not really trying. I know it sounds strange. Quello scales to Silva Zoldic, Silva one-shots Chitu, and Finks can't one-shot random, no-name gorilla ant. But like I said, the armor sling rankings don't include include Nen enhancements and are just base physical strength. We even see that when Nobunaga arm wrestles Gon, neither of them use Nen, and when Gon gets enraged and uses Nen, he wins, despite Nobunaga being able to one-shot Gon and Killua. Krolo can just have so much more aura compared to the lower ranked members, which is why his feats are far superior. He's regularly referred to as Hisoka's supreme prey, someone he wants to fight more than anyone else, more than Illumi, and more than any Phantom True member, including Uvogan who he willingly let Karapika unalive. He's also seen Razor, Killua, Enraged Gon's John Ken, and none of them hold up to Krolo. That evidently brings us to Hisoka, who blatantly scales to Krolo in physical ability. Even when Krolo slams Hisoka by literally stomping on him repeatedly, Hisoka takes almost no damage and just calculates his next move, while well, just a few smacks with bungee gum is enough to draw blood from Krolo. Of course, Krolo preps a lot to fight Hisoka, claiming nobody has forced him to use as many abilities as Hisoka did. Even though Hisoka lost the fight, the entire thing was basically orchestrated for him to lose, and doesn't mean he would instantly lose to Krolo if they fought normally. And for you Krolo down players, it also doesn't mean Hisoka would just smack Krolo without prep. As Krolo himself states, his fighting style is to absolutely guarantee his victory, to erase any chance of defeat because Krolo believes absolutely in fate and blah 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 narrative stuff like that. Regardless, the fact he needed to prep doesn't mean he needed to win, but it does mean that Hisoka absolutely poses a threat to Krolo at the very least. Hisoka should therefore scale to Zeno and Silva as well, just like Krolo, which is backed up by the fact that Illumi backs down from him whenever he is threatened. He doesn't consider most of the troop particularly interesting despite his weird sixth sensibility. He does have a fondness for Manchi, but that doesn't mean she scales to him. Hisoka even wants to fight Kaluto and <laughs> Leorio. He lets Karapika take down Vogan and doesn't actively pursue fights with them until he is trying to murder them. Hisoka and Krolo both have 4 out of 5 combat stats in the guides, above Zazan and above the other squadron leaders, and both have extremely versatile abilities backed by top tier combat IQs. As for who is stronger, again, it's hard to say. They both scale extremely closely with different powers that make them hard to say who would win in a straight up fight. You can interchange them depending on who you think is strong longer, but they are for sure beating everyone else below. They are pretty clearly two of the strongest characters in the series, at least before the super powerful mutant super ants show up. Anyway, thank you guys for watching once again. I know this list is very controversial and up for interpretation, but that's honestly the only way I can make this make sense without losing half the audience. If you guys like Hunter Hunter content, please hit the subscribe button so I know to make more videos like this. If you didn't like the video, make sure you join my Discord server and we can talk about it there. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you next time.